So I want to give you a, a very good um, picture. During the war, the Rebbe was in France, in Paris, and he went. He went into one of the uh, offices from the from the help uh, organizations, and of course everything was crazy. Everything was chaos. It was a middle of the war. The Rebbe came in and asked for something, and they said, we can't, not now. So he says, tell me when I should come back, because I, I have to schedule my date. And the man in charge there was shocked, because nobody had a schedule. There was no day, there was no night, everything was crazy. And here, this young man comes in and says he has a schedule, he has to know when to come back, what time, <laughs> as, if, as, if, as if everything was normal. He found out many, many years later that that was the that was the devil. <clears throat> so if you take, if you imagine, the whole world is falling apart, and here the devil is living his day with a schedule, with a with a with a purpose. How does how do you ignore the fact that there's a war going on? So the one thing that we have to get straight in our mind the world was not created good and we messed it up that's not true the world was created low bad and our job is to fix it so when we see something wrong it's our job to fix it but why is it wrong? <laughs> this is the kind of world it is. But in the first place, it was perfect, right? No, there was a tree that was poison, right? <laughs> and there was a snake. And this is even in Gan Eden. There was a snake. Yeah. So, <clears throat> the God created worlds that aren't perfect. There's heaven. Heaven is good. But then God created earth, a place that is not good, that needs to become good. So we're not shocked that there's, that there's uh, ugliness, there's difficulties. There's when in history we saw something so ugly that it caught us by surprise. We didn't think the world would get that ugly. Th then we were a little bit overwhelmed and we were paralyzed and gave up because we couldn't handle it. But a generation later, two generations later, we were back. We'll fix the world. After the destruction of the Beit HaMikdash, the first one, the second one. Each time we thought, okay, this is already finished. <laughs> Too much. Too much. You can't fix this. But a few years later, a generation later, we can fix this too. And even after the Holocaust, when we thought it's all finished, there's no God, there's no nothing, it's all over. We're back. We'll fix it, we'll make it. We'll I was talking to a young girl who had a very, very difficult childhood. Really, really. Not the usual, the divorce and the fighting, but this was really unusually nasty. She went to yeshiva. She was doing okay until she turned 17. And then she started questioning. There's God and there's justice and Mashiach is coming. It's going to be good. She didn't believe it. So she's telling me, I don't believe it. I, don't. I said, okay. So what are you going to do? So she says, I know how bad things can be. So when I get older, I'll find ways to help and make things better. So I said, make things better in this world that is so bad and so ugly? How are you going to make things better? 
she says, now oh, come on, it can always get better. I said, and you don't believe in Mashiach? <laughs> You're talking like Mashiach. So she saw how terrible life is, and what is her reaction? Got to make it better. So the idea is the world is, is, is ugly and, and ungodly to begin with. It was created that way. It's our job to fix it. When we get a little overwhelmed and we think this is not fixable, eh, wait till tomorrow. <laughs> You'll be in a better mood. You'll fix it tomorrow. So the miracle of our history is that we never really gave up. We had plenty of reason to give up. Plenty. We never gave up. Maybe, we, you know, we were knocked down a little bit for a while, but we always come back. And, and So why are there bad things in the world? This is the world of bad that needs to be fixed. <clears throat> so we shouldn't be discouraged. You know, it's, it's happened before, and, and, we, and we handle it. Now, concerning this neighborhood, since he came to see the neighborhood, right? Every place <coughs> has a certain nature. The Gemara says that certain countries produce strong people. Certain countries, locations, produce weak people. We know that even within America, there are places where people are nice, there are places where people are not, there are places where people are, uh, are more religious, places where people are less religious, by the nature of the place. In the Soviet Union, every city has a different personality, <laughs> completely different from the one right next to it. In Europe also, countries are right next to each other, and yet you cross the border, it's a different world. People talk different, think different, act different. So it's not just customs that are different, it's personality. Now either the place produces it, or the people who settled there introduced a certain personality and energy to that place, and that's what it is. So why the previous Rebbe chose Crown Heights of all the neighborhoods in New York and Brooklyn. Maybe there was something about it that was already good, or maybe the Rebbe introduced his personality, and, and that's how this neighborhood remained. And when you come into the neighborhood, you feel it, if you're sensitive. So somebody pointed out, maybe the Rebbe chose this neighborhood because of the names of the streets. Right. So you heard that? Because huh? they all have to do with Mashiach, like the crown, right? Well, they all have to do with leadership, with royalty, with, uh, with good things, like union instead of division, president, empire. These are all, maybe. Kingston. It's Kings County. Okay. That's cute. <laughs> but Eastern Parkway? It's East. Mm -hmm. My heart is in the east. But what did the Rebbe introduce into this neighborhood? A very, very important godly instinct. And that is, life is not about me. That, that, that is a, a radical attitude that you don't find almost anywhere else. Everybody's life is their life. They have to live their life to the best of their ability, to make the most of their life, to be the best they could be. I mean, after all, it's my life. The Rebbe came and said, it's your life. How did, how did you get a life? It's not your life. And this one point, this one idea, 
can change the world completely. My life is not mine. My life is not for me. That's such a crazy idea. And yet it's so true. It's so true. And that's why when people say, what went wrong with my life? My life got messed up. What's wrong with my life? <laughs> Wait a minute. It didn't get messed up. It was never yours. Calm down. It's exactly what it needs to be. Just do, do, what, you're, do what you're supposed to do. It was never about you. <laughs> like a teenager said, well, I don't like my life. What, you get to order from a menu? <laughs> the kind of life you want. <clears throat> You're given a life, and it's not for you. That's why people who, you know, the, the, that medrash that says that there was this demon called Lilith, the female demon, what was, what was it? She didn't want to have children. She was anti-children. Hava was the mother of all living things. The opposite of that was Lilith, no children. Why, why no children? It's my life. I have my life. What do I have to get involved with somebody else's life? So what is Chava? Chava means, what is a mother? A mother means, for me, I have to make another life. My life is not enough. So just to have a life doesn't make sense. You have to give a life, you have to make a life, you have to something, but just to have a life and that's it? That's depressing. One of the features of this neighborhood is the people have the conviction life is not about me. And that's why every home is open to guests constantly. Not just one guest, not just two guests, as many as they can fit in. And for year after year after year, like you don't get tired of this, you know, you want a little privacy, you want a little privacy. What, my life is about me? So even psychologically, mentally, in, in, in health, a person who lives their life for themselves as if life was for them get depressed. Get the what? Depressed. Mm 